right, so our first example should look familiar from the pattern train activity that you did in class today. So we've got some different uh, hexagon trains here, and we're looking at the perimeter for each train. So if we look at the train here in position one, perimeter remembers distance around a figure, and so since it's six sides, the first uh, hexagon here has a value or a perimeter of six. Okay? I'm going to go on to train two, and if I count each one of the sides, the outside for the perimeter of this train, I would have a perimeter of 10. And then train three, if we were to count all the sides and find our perimeter, again, this time now we have a perimeter of 14. Okay? And so the first thing that I want to do is see what is the pattern? What's happening here every single time? And I'm sure that you've already figured it out. Every single time, we're adding 4 to the value. And so because you know this pattern is going to continue on adding 4, you can even figure out uh, the perimeter of a train 4, even though we don't have it drawn here, we know it's just going to add 4, and we would have a value of 18. So when we go to find the process, we want to take that common difference that we've got. So the common difference or the pattern we've got is every single time we're adding 4. Okay? Well, we know that a repeated addition is just a multiplication problem. So we can take that common difference of 4 and multiply it by the position or whichever train that we were on. So here, because I've got a common difference of 4, I'm going to multiply that 4 by the position, meaning the first train. Now, 4 times 1 only equals 4. So what do I need to do to 4 to get to 6? Right? Add 2. Because 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 will give me 6. Let's see if the same thing works for position number 2. So my common difference is still 4. I'm going to multiply that by the position of 2. 4 times 2 is 8. I still need more because I've got to get to 10 here. So if I add that 2, now my 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 gives me my 10. And this can continue on for any number. So here my common difference is 4 times the position of 3. Well, that's only 12. I need to add 2 more to get to 14. I can do the same thing for 4. So my common difference of 4 times the position of 4 is 16. I need to add 2 more to get to 18. So every single time I've taken my common difference times the position, and then I found that for every single one, I had to add two more on to get to the desired value that's here. Okay? And so at the bottom of your table, you've got the n, because that n is a variable saying that we could plug in any position number here. Okay? So that means I'm still doing my common difference of 4 times my position. So 4 times n, and every single time, we're adding 2. Okay. So, say I wanted to find the 8th train. Okay. Well, because I know that that train is the 8th position, all I would do is 4 times 8. Plus 2. All I've done is, is pull the position number of 8 in for my variable of n. So 4 times 8 is 32. Plus 2 means that the perimeter of the 8th train would be 34. Alright guys, let's look at problem number 2. It states x1 requires 5 pebbles. Use a table to develop a rule for the number of pebbles for any size x. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the pictures and fill out our table to begin with. So, we've got the figure 1, the first x requires 5 pebbles. So, it's got a value of 5. Okay? The second x the one in position 2 has a value of the number of pebbles that it takes, which is 9 if you count them up. Okay? And if we look at figure 3, we've got a total of 13 pebbles. Okay? And so, the, again, the first thing we want to look at is what is the common difference? What's the pattern that we see each time? And if I'm checking these out, I can see that every single time I'm adding 4. 
9 again plus 4 will give me 13. And so I could even go on to the fourth x even though I don't have a picture drawn for it. So all I would have to do is add 4 to 13 and see that the fourth x would have a value of 17 pebbles. Now from here I want to find the process because this is what I'm going to use to find how many pebbles would be in any size x. The first thing that I'm going to do is take that common difference Remember, because that common difference is plus 4 each time, repeated addition is just a multiplication problem. So I'm going to do 4 times my position number. So I've got 4 times the position of 1. Well, that's only 4. And so to get to 5, I still need to add 1 more. Okay? And I'll do the same thing for the second position. So I've got a common difference of 4. And this is my second x. 4 times 2 is only 8, and so to get to 9, I still need to add one more. Same thing with position 3. My common difference of 4 times 3 is only 12, so I still need to add one more to get me to a value of 13. And even for 4, I've got my common difference of 4 times my position, meaning this is x number 4. That's only 16. So I've got to add one more to get to 17. Now, I don't want to do this for the 936x, okay? But I can use a variable of n for any x or any position that I want. And so all I would do is take that common difference of 4 times n, meaning, remember, this is our variable. This can be any number, okay? And every single time, we added 1 to it. Notice that the only thing that changed in any of these processes is the variable. Remember, that's a number that can, that letter can represent any number, okay? So every single time we added 1, and say we wanted to find the value of the sixth term. All we would do is take the rule that we have come up with, 4 times n. Well, in this case, we're looking for the sixth term, so we're going to plug in a 6 there for our position. So 4 times 6 plus 1 would tell us that the 6x would take 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1. So it would take 25 pebbles to complete that x. Go ahead and work example number 3 on your own. All right, on number 3, you were supposed to be looking at the value based on the perimeter of your figures. So the first figure had a perimeter of 4, the second one a 6, 8, and 10. And so obviously our common difference here is every time we're adding 2. Remember, you take that common difference and multiply it by your position. Once you've done that, you need to look and see, okay, what do I need to add and subtract to get to that value? So here our rule should have been 2 times the position, and then we had to add 2. If you wanted to even find the seventh term, we would just plug in a 7 there for our variable. And so 2 times 7 is 14, plus 2 means that the seventh one would have a perimeter of 16. All right, guys, here's example four. This time we're looking at how many blocks it takes to make the L. And so our first figure took a total of three blocks. The next one, five blocks and then the third one, seven blocks. And because we know that that common difference that we found is adding two every time, our fourth figure would have nine blocks. Remember to find our process, we're multiplying that common difference times our position, and then adding or subtracting to get to that value. So here, two times one, and we've got to add one more to get to three. And so we have the common rule here that we could use for any figure, any position, two times n plus one, okay? And so then when you looked to do the ninth term, we don't necessarily need to draw out the L, but we can plug in a 9 as our position where that variable is. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So guys, if there's anything that you were a little bit lost on or confused on, feel free to rewind. Go back and watch the video again. Take some time. Come to class tomorrow ready to work.